In this video, we're going to be going over how to turn a standard color image into something that looks more stylized using procedural textures. So down in the description below is a link to all of these three different shaders as a free download. You can use it for whatever you want, so personal or commercial use, completely up to you and you don't have to give credit. So here what I'm going to do is just quickly do an overview of each of the shaders and how to tweak the parameters to match um, the input image you're using. In this case, I'm using a picture of some lemons because they work pretty well. Um, it has some nice darks and some quite bright sections as well, which gives you some good contrast, which the procedural textures will use. So here I'm going to first look at the dotted sketch texture. So if we scroll in here, you can see it's this node group. If you want to, you can press tab and explore how they're put together. But otherwise, all you need to worry about is these fields here. So if we scroll in a bit, you can see that the entire image here is compromised of singular dots and nothing else. So what that allows us to do is make it look as if someone has gotten a pencil and dotted all over the image to create something that represents the final image here. So let's just start at the top. This one here is the size directly correlated to the procedural texture size. So obviously if you increase that, the dots are gonna become very, very small and you'll be getting more detail coming out of the image. However, if they are too small, it's gonna just start looking like the original in black and white. So you want to make sure that this is relatively low, at least uh, relative to the size of the image. Okay, so here I usually just leave it at 16. That works most of the time. Um, the next field here, gamma, as well as brightness and contrast, are operations that occur directly on the image here. So if you, for example, need to make something brighter, have more contrast, uh, or you need to change how the gamma of it looks, you can do this directly here and it will perform that procedure on the image. It has nothing to do with the procedural texture that is layered on top and is just using the warping and size fields. In this case here, you can see we um, can tweak the gamma until we have something that we like. Uh, again, usually one works pretty well. You can also increase the brightness or decrease it and the contrast allows you to make certain parts more dark and other parts more bright. In this case, if you wanted to color the image on top, then you probably want to have um, quite a few white regions and only use the dark regions when you really need to. Now, speaking of coloring, we can actually synthesize our own colors that will look great on top of this image. To do that, you can see we have our base image here. And all I'm going to do is press Shift A, go to color, hue saturation, here I'm going to turn the saturation to two, connect the color component. And from that, all we need to do is multiply this with the value output from here. So we're gonna go over to color, mix RGB, multiply, factor to one, and then connect the color here into the color of the mix shader. And now you can see we have a kind of old retro looking image um, without doing anything else except using the existing colors here and this one shader. Of course, if you'd like to have it a bit more subtle, you can turn down how strong the colors are, or even just half fade them to make it look a little bit more uh, neutral. But again, that's up to you, and the styling is really your choice as well. So again, like I said, an interesting way to add color to um, the existing sketches and stuff. But of course, if you just like to use them as they are, you can also do that just like this. Okay, so the next filter here is using lines, or what I like to call hashing, um, to make a image look nice and realistic. The first simple one is just the size, which determines how big the lines are. If they are too big, then obviously it's not gonna look great. And um, let's just set it to 0.1. Yeah, you can see it almost just looks like a black and white representation. However, again, if we turn this to perhaps three or something, you can see that the lines come out a lot more. Again, we've got our brightness and contrast, which determine which parts of the image are being applied to the filter. 
and um, yeah, we can basically tweak these. You'll have to change these every time you have a different image because obviously the color range varies and that also means the brightness varies. So the filter output will also change. Again, we have the gamma here just as before and the effects are pretty similar. We also have this warping field, which I forgot to talk about back here. And what that basically does is apply distortion to the lines that exist. If we do it to this dotted texture here, you can see that we get some distortion being applied here and it kind of works like a blur. The last one is like a water stain shader or oil stain shader and that is the one up here. This one is a little bit more complicated and a little bit more fragile uh, in the way that it depends very much on the image you are using and the uh, properties that you add here can be a lot more complicated to balance. Um, here is the threshold which basically decides what parts of the image should have the oil shader applied to it. Um, this one is pretty difficult to get right, usually around 0.3 or 4, but again depends on the brightness of the image. The strength here determines how strong the oil filter is, so if you set it to well, obviously negative or really high values, then you'll get really high extremes and all the grays and everything else will fade out. Usually keeping this at one works the best, um, however again, you might need to change it for each image. The scale is pretty self-explanatory and for each image it will change. Exponent just kind of scales the noise itself and makes parts more bright and dark, kind of like a contrast component. Um, the contrast here is again just for the image itself, not the procedural texture, and same for the brightness. Gamma also does the same. So that's the end of this video. If you'd like to learn more about procedural stuff, this can be quite useful just to delve into the node groups here and explore a bit what's happening on the inside and then how you can use this in your own workflows. Again, there's a link down in the description below if you'd like to get the shader and work with it a bit. But otherwise, hope this video was useful. Have a great week and I'll see you in the next one.